let me address this uh, escalating problem we have with government debt in Canada. Uh, I asked a question a long time ago that actually really tried to nail down the government on their debt to GDP ratio calculation because it is a fabrication. Uh, Canadians understand what debt costs them and the mounting cost of debt that's been happening across the economy, in particular in their own accounts, but they're also looking at the government accounts. $47 billion is the projected amount the government's going to have to spend servicing the debt this year. And that's going to grow by about 50% to over $67 billion within four years because of this mounting and escalating debt this government is adding on to the backs of Canadians at the federal government level alone. Now, there's one thing I want to make sure people are clear about here. There's more than one debt in Canada. There's more than one government debt. So there's $1.4 trillion of federal government debt outstanding. Add in an extra $700 billion of provincial government debt, about $2.1 trillion of debt held by governments across Canada for a country whose GDP is about $2.25 trillion. And actually, those numbers are updated. When you look at actually the IMF, they say that our debt to GDP ratio in Canada is north of 100%, 107% is their number, and yet this government, in their pretense, says it's 40%. How do they think they arrive at the 40% at the federal government level alone? What they do is they take the money that's in the Canada pension plan and the Quebec pension plan, and they try and say that's an asset of the government of Canada, the money they take off people's paychecks that goes into a separately managed account for the retirement of Canadians. The government thinks they're using that as collateral for them to jump into the piggyback and use to make sure that they don't have to pay the, the debt they're going to have to pay back to that, uh, that's due in the future here. Now, this is a problem, but I'm going to talk, first of all, about the IMF. I know my colleague across the way tried to, de tried to say that Canada has the best debt-to-GDP ratio in the group of seven companies. Completely false. You need to look at that actual chart, and I can point him to that website if you'd like. There's another additional problem here, of course, because debt is not just government debt in Canada. Debt is personal debt and corporate debt. We call it non-financial debt. Uh, and so the personal debt alone in Canada is about $3 trillion. And on top of what the government debt was, which was $2.1 trillion, and then add the private debt on top of that, which is about another uh, $3.75 trillion. You've got a massively debt-financed economy here in Canada. The amount of interest spent by Canadians is exorbitant and is going to continue to rise because of this government's profligate spending. We have got to get this under control. The problem with debt is, once it's a problem, it's an escalating problem. There's a reason the International Monetary Fund was going to interfere in Canada's public budget processes back in the 1990s. And the reason the Chrétien government at that point in time had to intervene and cut the actual amount they spent on health care by half and put that on the backs of the provinces because the country was loaded up on debt and it had to be dealt with very quickly. The way they dealt with that was loading it onto the backs of the provinces. We're going to see the same thing again because this government is going to face a problem in the very near future. Would you please address this debt-to-GDP ratio that has to get under control? Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And the member opposite is a graduate of the Ivy School of Business. He knows numbers very well. Clearly, he's a fan of numbers, and I am too. So I'll follow along his line of argument around the number 40, a debt-to-GDP ratio at 40 percent, Madam Speaker. Listen, as a woman in her 40s, I feel like I know this number well. The member opposite mentioned 40% debt to GDP ratio, and I understand why most people feel like that's a large number. After all, 40% is close to half. 40% is usually enough to be elected in a riding in Canada, so 40% can seem impressive to my Conservative colleagues. But when it comes to government debt, well, that's a different story. Speaker, do you know that when the, U when the U.S. last had a debt-to-GDP ratio of 40%, that would be in the early 1980s, before Ronald Reagan blew a hole in the American financial system with his irresponsible tax cuts for the very wealthy. So what's the U.S. debt-to-GDP ratio today? Well, 
In the US, it's around 120%. Yes, you heard that right. It is actually over 100%. Is the US an isolated case? I don't think so. Let's look at our G7 peers. In France, it's over 90%. In the UK, over 100%. Italy is 140% plus. In Japan, it's over 200%. So what do these numbers tell us? First, Canada has the lowest debt to GDP ratio in the G7, and our comparative advantage is growing. Why does that matter? Because when your comparative advantage grows, that's when foreign investment flows into your country. And that's what creates more jobs, more good paying jobs. Second, conservatives are desperate, desperate to gaslight Canadians and scare folks with scary sounding numbers without context. Third, conservatives argue that we shouldn't make the tax system fair, that we shouldn't help Canadians feel like the playing field is actually level. Speaker, my, my time is short, so I would like to touch on another 40 that my colleague raised, and it was in a previous conversation in this House, a $40 billion deficit. That also sounds like a big number, Madam Speaker, but I like another even bigger number, 2.2 trillion Canadian dollars. That is our gross domestic product in Canada, Madam Speaker, the size of the entire great, amazing, beautiful Canadian economy. That is $2,200 billion. That is what the deficit is measured against. And that means our deficit is actually below 2% of GDP. That is to be compared uh, to about 6% in the United States and about 5% in France. Yes, Madam Speaker, numbers do matter. Context matters. The Honourable Member for Calgary Centre. Well, I thank my colleague for the numbers, but the numbers have to be correct at the, at the end of the day. We've gone through my speech, so I was hoping she'd listen because the 40% that she's stating is actually a fabrication. She's using Canadians' assets as collateral, which she proposed also to go into their private pension plans in order to get the balance she's looking for here of the 40%. The number she states as far as where the U.S. and France is, the comparable number for Canada, is 107%. I challenge her to look at that very website. She got those numbers off of for the other countries. 40% is a fabrication. 40% raids the piggy bank of the pension funds of Canadians, and that is not the federal government's money. We've talked about that several times in this House. She's also not counting the provincial debts, which are also on top of it and are included in the other numbers in the country she's referenced along the way here. Her numbers need to be more forthcoming. She needs to be more forthcoming with Canadians. Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. No, Madam Speaker, I don't include provincial debt in the federal debt. Madam Speaker, since I only have one minute and uh, my colleague raises several points, I thought I would take the opportunity, given the news of today, to remind Canadians that inflation has fallen from its high at over 8% to just 2% in Canada. That is a reduction of over three quarters, beating all forecasts, and now perfectly in line with our target rate set by the Bank of Canada. Canada was actually the first, the first among all of our peers to cut interest rates and then cut them again and then cut them again, Madam Speaker, bringing relief to homeowners today and tomorrow. And that will help not only homeowners that exist right now in our country, but new prospective homeowners, Madam Speaker. I have a lot more numbers in my sheet, but I see that my time is coming to a close. I would be happy to respond to additional finance questions from my Conservative colleague in the future.